Today I've got a nice number theory problem that comes from the 1994 Flanders Mathematical Olympiad. So let's see what we have. Our goal is to find all natural numbers A, B, and C, and somewhat controversially, I'll take the natural numbers to be the positive integers so that they don't include zero. Sorry. Then we want those to satisfy the following equation. We have a plus the square root of c squared plus b plus the square root of c squared equals 60 plus 20 times the square root of c. And well, we're going to do this as like a basic calculation, but I would like to point out that there's an underlying fact here that maybe is a little bit of more interest. And that is if the square root of c is not a rational number, so in other words, c is not a perfect square, then the number one and the square root of c forms a basis for q adjoined root c as a vector space over q. And that immediately implies that if x plus y square root of c equals z plus w square root of c, then x equals z and y equals w. And in fact, these two statements are equivalent. So that means we can build our equation and then extract the coefficients of the square root of c and then just the numbers. And that's exactly what we'll do. Okay, so we'll start by expanding out this left-hand side. That'll leave me with a squared plus c plus 2a times the square root of c. So I wrote it in a slightly non-standard order for squaring a binomial, but notice I put everything that is um, a non-negative integer or a natural number to the left. Now I'll do something similar for this b plus root c term. That'll give me b squared plus c plus 2b times the square root of c. Then like I said, we have this is equal to 60 plus 20 root c. Now let's combine some things. So let's write these integer terms so that they're next to each other. And we'll write these multiples of square root of c so that they're next to each other as well. That'll give me something like this. We'll have a squared plus b squared plus two times c. That's everything from the orange underline plus let's see, 2a plus 2b, all times the square root of c, that comes from the green underline, equals 60 plus 20 root c. So that's just from rewriting this above equation. But now what I can do is I can, like I said before, equate the constant terms and the square root of c terms. So that builds me a system of equations as indicated by these different color underlines. Okay, so just to kind of have a midpoint summary, we know that a squared plus b squared plus two times c must be equal to 60. And we also know that two a plus two b equals 20, but we might as well divide by two and that'll give us something like a plus b equals 10. Okay. So that'll be our nice system of equations. Okay, so now where do we wanna go from there? Well, let's start with an inequality. So let's notice that immediately we know that c is bigger than or equal to one, given that it's a natural number. So that means that two c is bigger than or equal to two, and thus a squared plus b squared must be less than or equal to 58, because we're subtracting that two from both sides. And then also a squared plus b squared is always bigger than or equal to four as well, but I won't write that down. Okay, so now let's notice that if a is bigger than or equal to eight, or symmetrically b is bigger than or equal to eight, then we get a squared plus b squared is bigger than or equal to 64, which is bigger than 58, which is a problem. Okay, so just to reiterate, this thing that I'm putting in our brown box is a problem. It would lead to a contradiction, so that means a cannot be bigger than or equal to eight. So that means a can only be one through seven. But in fact, a cannot be equal to two or one either 
because that would be corresponding to the case when b is equal to 8 or 9 or 10. Okay, so let's put this all together. So that tells us we only have the following values for a and b. So a can be equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, while b is equal to 7, 6, 5, four or three. So those are our possibilities and I've like paired them off like that. So just to simplify it, let's only look at the solutions when A is less than or equal to B. And then we also obviously get some symmetric solutions for the other case. So that means we would wanna hone in on those that are boxed. And now we'll just work through these one case at a time to see if we get a value for C. So let's start with a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 7. So if a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 7, back into this equation right here, which maybe we'll maybe put a blue dot next to this, just so that we can see where this is coming from, we'll have 9 plus 49 plus 2c is equal to 60. So that tells us that c is equal to 1. And that gives us our first solution of 3, 7, and 1, and then the symmetric solution of 7, 3, and 1. Now let's look at the next case when a is equal to 4 and thus b is equal to 6 and see what we get from that. So plugging into this blue dot again, we'll have 16 plus 36. So 16 plus 36 plus 2 times c is equal to 60. But now via simple arithmetic, what we'll get here is for c to be equal to 4. And that gives us really our second or our third and fourth solutions. So we'll have a is 4, b is 6, and c is 4, or a is 6, b is 4, and c is 4. And that leaves us with one more, which would be the case when a equals b equals 5. And what does the blue dot collapse to here? So we'll have 25 plus 25 plus 2c equals 60. So in the end, we'll get c equals 5. So this is maybe the most symmetric solution because all of our a, b, and c are equal to 5. Okay, so if you've gotten this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure and do that. It'd be great to have you around. And that's a good place to stop.